In this video, I want to go over the Keynesian expenditure approach on how to eliminate either a recessionary gap or an inflationary gap. In this example that I'm going to use, I'm going to utilize a recessionary gap. Now, what do we mean by a recessionary gap? Well, from the graph right here, you can see I have full employment and I have equilibrium. And again, by looking at our so-called equilibrium GDP is at 640. And we look over here, I am saying, oh, that identity that we focused on from the standpoint of the expenditure approach to GDP happens to be C plus I plus G, right? Consumption, business investment, and government spending. Well, from the standpoint of full employment, Full employment would be identified by this particular line, subset two. Well, what we're saying here is that we are in a recession. Keynesians would say is that, in other words, when full employment GDP, and usually is identified when the, G, when, when the unemployment rate is somewhere between three and four percent. So, we have here full employment GDP is at 700. I currently have an equilibrium GDP at 640. So yes, the difference of 60 is referred to as my recessionary gap. Now let me repeat that. If my full employment GDP is greater than my equilibrium GDP, a recessionary gap. Or from the standpoint if my, if my full employment GDP is less than my equilibrium GDP, guess what? An inflationary gap. So in this particular case, I have a recessionary gap. How do I eliminate the recessionary gap of 60? Well, again, we're looking at the Keynesian approach right now. And the Keynesian approach will focus in on two things. Spending by the government and taxation by the government. So in this particular illustration, I would want to know, and let me just scroll down here, I will want to know, right, uh, how am I going to increase the equilibrium output by $60 if I have government spending? Now, keep in mind when we're talking about government spending, as you can see, that is a direct component of GDP by the expenditure approach. When we talk in terms of taxation, you don't see any T here. Well, indirectly, if I reduce taxes, that simply means that your income, disposable income, is going to go up. And if your disposable income is going to go up, the Keynesians believe that one or two things will happen. Your consumption is going to go up and your savings will go up. Well, by how much? Well, it just depends upon our marginal propensity to consume and our marginal propensity to save. That will be the determining factor on how much the government should increase or, in this case, decrease taxes. So, let's just look at increasing our expenditures, right? We gotta go to, we gotta get to 700. We have a difference of 60. So really, this is how you will approach doing this type of problem. And what I'm assuming here, our marginal propensity to consume is 0.75. That simply means that for every new dollar that I get, I'm gonna spend 75 cents and save 25 cents. And that goes back from the standpoint of what I have identified this week on, on within Moodle, right? I said MPC plus MPS equals one. Now, as I pointed out, if I receive a dollar, if my MPC is 0.75, that means I'm going to spend 75 cents. Well, if I spend 75 cents, somebody's going to receive 75 cents. That means their income is going to go up by 75 cents. And if we're looking at the aggregate for the economy, MPC of 
or 0.75. That means that individual that received the 75 cents is going to spend what? 75% of that 70, of that, we'll say 75 cents, and they're going to save 25% of that 75 cents. And so you can see this process is going to go on and on and on and on and on. Well, how long will it go on? Well, that's where the multiplier comes in, comes into play. The multiplier for the economy is given by the reciprocal of MPX. Or in this case, right, 1 divided by MPS, our MPS is 0.25, right? 0.75 plus 0.25 equals 1. So 1 divided by 0.25 gives us the multiplier for the economy. So going back to that situation, if I receive a dollar, the full impact, the full impact, on the economy will be for that one dollar that I spend will go up by a total of four. That's what we mean by this multiplier impact or multiplier effect on GDP. So that's my multiplier. Now how much should government spend? Take into account what I just said. Well we know the gap is 60 so I'm going to take that gap, recessionary gap of 60 and I'm going to divide it by 4, which equals 15. And that is the dollar amount that government should increase its spending, right? If the government spends $15, and I'm the recipient of that 15, I'm going to spend, as I said, according to my MPC, which in this case is 75%, and I'm going to say 25%. So the ultimate impact on the economy as this is spread throughout would be four times that. So what, what's four times 15? 60. So the government only has to spend 15, given a multiplier here at four, right? So I'm going to get to 70, according to the Keynesian's belief. So that's how one would determine, right? One would determine how I can eradicate, eliminate the recessionary gap of 60. Government doesn't have to spend 60. It only has to spend 15. Now, let's go on to that second situation. The other scenario, which is a little bit more complicated, uh, but not that much more difficult. And once again, uh, I got to increase that equilibrium output by 60, but this time I'm dealing with taxes. And for the answer, and you can go back and of course review this video, but what I'm saying here is keep in mind that taxes impact disposable income that influences consumption and savings by one's MPC and PS that I previously discussed. So in other words, first, in other words, what we would have to do is determine the gap. In this case, yes, the recessionary gap is 60. And I'm going to divide that by the multiplier of 4, as I did before, and I came up with 15. Well, once again, the government is not going to cut taxes by 15, because, in other words, if the government cuts taxes by 15, right, that means income's going to go up by 15, and you're going to spend, if my multiplier is still 0.75, 75% of that. So, what I have to do, and this is the second phase that you would have to do, is that you would have to take the $15 and you would have to divide it by the MPC of 0.75. Oh, that's 20. So what I'm saying here is that if we're focusing on a decrease in taxes, the government would cut taxes by 20. Why 20? Well, as I'm saying here, if the government cuts taxes by 20, disposable income will go up by 20. And if this disposable income is up by 20, right, you're going to spend 15, right, income, disposable income, 20 times 0.75 is 15, and you're going to save 5, 20 times 0.25. So taxes are going to be cut by 20, your income's going to go up by 20, you're going to spend 15, 
And lo and behold, incorporating that multiplier of four, four times 15, we will eliminate the gap of 60. So, two ways, according to a Keynesian approach to a recessionary gap, right? Government spending, increase it, cut government taxes. And if we had a so-called inflationary gap, it would just be the difference. It would, excuse me, it would just be the opposite. I would have to cut government spending and have to increase taxes, but the approach would still be exactly the same. So hopefully uh, this video helps you to uh, understand, as I pointed out, uh, the Keynesian approach, the Keynesian expenditure approach uh, to government spending and taxation.